Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah uh, Praise and all the um, We say thank to Allah and praise to Allah That we meet again tonight Insyaallah we continue with our The series of five women series so Five women of uh, uh, highest taqwa So uh, last month we talked about um, Khadija radiallahu anha And today we talk about her daughter Which is Fatimah radiallahu anha So, so how many people turn up today? <laughs> so I'm gonna pick on you, brother. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you questions. And, all right, Bismillah. All right, let's let's start. Uh, so, there's probably not much um, sort of uh, stories about Fatima Radulana. Uh, this uh, because uh, she probably she played more um, in a role in the background, uh, supporting the, her father as well as uh, her husband uh, Ali. Uh, Ali. Bin Abi Talib Radiallahu Anhu. But yeah, let's uh, let's talk about um, her tonight. Insha'Allah, uh, we divided this talk tonight into four sections. Basically, just to understand her family and lineage, and and because it, in the tribal era, at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the the tribe uh, it was pretty much a tribal tribal life. So tribe is very important to know the lineage as well. And then uh, we capture some of the stories about Fatima Radiallahu Anha. I divided into two, like a Meccan time and Medina time. And then we uh, talk about the summary, some of the blessings of her, and then the summary of uh, just sort of sort of recap uh, what she, she was like and how she is uh, uh, quoted as one of the best women uh, who attend Taqwa. I uh, probably we call it the the leader of uh, the queen or the leader of the queen of all the women in Jannah. All right. Uh, let's talk about uh, lineage first, inshallah. So, basically, she is a daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu and uh, from the Quraysh, and she is married to the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu which is uh, Ali, and then is from the Bani Hasim. So the Quraysh have have uh, four. Uh, uh, Quite a big numbers of uh, sub tribes. Bani Hashim is one of them, and and Bani Umayyah as well. So uh, Rasulullah SAW was from the Bani Hashim, and then from the family of Rasulullah SAW, uh, all the children, all the children of Rasulullah, there are six reported to be six, from Khadija radiallahu anha, and one from uh, Maria. Uh, all the six of them, uh, there was there was. Some narrations about the Fatima was the last, the last daughter or the the fifth uh, child, uh, but I think uh, most majority says as the last daughter. So just want to uh, discuss. Number one is um, Fatima Radulla is the definitely the eldest, uh, the sorry, the youngest daughter uh, after Zainab, uh, Rukayah, and Um Kultum, and Fatima Radulla and her with her marriage with Ali bin Abi Talib have the Blessed with four children, which is Hassan, everyone probably already know, Hussein, not Hussein, I think I got it, uh, there's a typo there, Hussein bin Ali and Zainab bin, uh, bin Ali as well. And then, so she named, uh, they named two of their daughters, uh, the name of their sisters of uh, Fatima, Zainab, as well as Um Kultum. Uh, just a little bit of the the other family members of Rasulullah, which is the other uh, siblings of Fatima. Number one is uh, Zainab. So Qasim, oh, the first son, uh, died in a very young age. I think he, Qasim died at about two years of age and very died uh, young as well as well as Abdullah. Abdullah also died young. Uh, Zainab at this time during before uh, the uh, before the prophethood, Zainab was um, supposed to be married to uh, uh, sorry, Rukaya. Rukaya was supposed to be married by uh, the, the, the son of Abu Lahab. Oh, so let me just go to it. Yeah, I got confused here. Yeah. Zainab, Zainab um, has a, a daughter uh, by the name of Umayya. Uh, so Umayya, yeah, I think. Umayya, did I get it correct? Oh, it's a typo, yeah. And Zainab was married to Abu Al-As. We talked about it last week, uh, last month. And Rukaya uh, was originally married to the son of Abu Lahab, which is Utbah bin Abu Lahab. And they got separated when uh, the, uh, the prophecy, uh, the prophet of Rasulullah SAW, came down and uh, it was they said you know, I'm not gonna listen to you I'm not gonna, I'm gonna everything they, they so they they broke the marriage and it was it was a big uh, 
it, it was sort of a big sadness and it was uh, to the, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Umm Kultum, as you know, Ruqayah and Umm Kultum later on married to Uthman bin Affan. We talk about it when, when we uh, discuss the story of Uthman. And then Fatima, Fatima's four uh, children and, and Abdullah. So Rasulullah has four, five and six. Yeah? It's a six uh, a grandchildren. Uh, there's also narrations actually that Fatima had uh, another son after Hussein. By the name of Muslim, but I, I could not find that in uh, in the Sunni tradition. It's more on the other side of the tradition, right? And uh, yes, that's uh, let's. So, <clears throat> uh, Fatima Rodiolanha was um, it was nursed directly by Khadija, so like it was contrary of the local custom at the time. Was as, as you know, Rasulullah Sallam was had a wet nurse by the name of, you remember? Halimah to Sadia, right? So it is, it is a common tradition uh, during that time that uh, a certain family, they, uh, they give their children to, um, to the people from the Bedouin because they're away from the uh, uh, sort of remote area and they'll probably, uh, put, it, put it like this, probably away from the town or the city life and stuff like that. So it's more pure and then they're more uh, close to nature and stuff like that. And uh, and Fatima was quite unique because she was not given to any wet nurse, and she was actually nursed by her own mother Khadija Uh She was nicknamed by the most famous one everyone should know, Al Zahra. Yeah, the name Al Zahra means something that's radiant, uh, bright, and shining, right? Um, if you look at because. Sometimes when we talk about Fatima Radulanha, there's sometimes you get confused with the other traditions and narrations. Some of them might be true, some of them might not have any root story within our Sunni tradition. I think uh, uh, it's just to make it simple and to make it, uh, um, just to put it uh, nicely on that. Uh, the other nickname of Fatima, which is Um Abiha, which is the mother of her father. When I was doing the slide and I found this Um Abiha, I was, I was, that nickname in alone is, is a big thing for me. Is it enough to describe what type of lady uh, Fatima Radiolanha was? Uh, um Abiha, the mother of her father. And you can see what is, what is the characteristics of a mother? Is it uh, nurturing? Is it caring and loving, right? So, and she was nicknamed as Umma Biha, the mother of her father. That means, that means she saw how to show love to Rasulullah Sallam and, and the caring and loving nature of Fatima Radul. I think this is probably, when I, when I wrote that, I think this is enough of a blessing of, uh, of Fatima Radul alone. Without all the other stories, this alone is enough for me to say, wow, right? And, and when we talk about Khadija Radul, how Rasulullah Sallam at the time of difficulties, at the time of, uh, when when he first received the revelation, he came to uh, Khadija to get advice, to get comfort, and everything. And now we found uh, Fatima Radulah as Um Abiha, and that's, and it will it will will go some of the stories and why uh, how how she was uh, so caring and uh, nature as well. Um, was one of the thing is that one of the stories was that when she was. Uh, I think she was five years old uh, when the prophethood came. So when Rasulullah became prophet, she was five years old. And during the first few years, three years, four years, if you can imagine, there was a lot of uh, prosecutions from the Makkah, or from the people from Makkah at the time. And imagine Fatima Radiallah, not only this is suffering for Rasulullah Sallam, you can see all the followers of the Muslims at that time being prosecuted. And people throw rocks at them, and then throw, uh, and then do nasty things and everything. And Fatima had to hear at least they, at least she heard that, as she experienced that she had to suffer all these tortures and everything came to to her father. And there was one actually one nurse. I think I will, I will talk about uh, about that a little bit more detail. Um, of course, she got nicknamed with other nicknames as well. If you look at some of the stories from the other narrations, she even nickname was the Umul. Aima, the mothers of all the imams, but of course, uh, we don't have that as um, 
uh, we don't have a, a base a source in our tradition. Um, uh, Aisha Radulah mentions that I never found someone uh, who mimic or who have that sort of characters and, and spoken words and stuff like that as the other than Fatima. So it was it was the blessing of uh, Fatima Radulah Anha to have to sort of uh, inherit the uh, the calmness and the, uh, the 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 soft spoken and everything. Right, so that is the, and one of the features of Fatima Radula because, uh, because when you have difficulties together, right, and you know marriage sometimes go as well. When you first get married, everything everyone's happy, right, but through difficulties you actually have bonds, right? Through difficulties and people actually bonds. If you look at most uh, whatever movies you have, right, there's always, there's always some. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, some calamity, some problems, and they will solve together. They become at the end of the movie. Uh, yeah, you can see that, right? Yes. So people, when they experience um, difficulty together and they came out of it, usually the bond uh, gets stronger. And this is where, uh, during the time, at the time, it's only Fatima was there, uh, and Zainab, the eldest one, is already married, right? And then she had to uh, she had to actually experience and then saw how Rasulullah Sallallahu is being tortured even by their own family members, by their own uncle, uh, Abu Lahab, and so on. Right, so it has actually established a very good relationship, a strong bond. And, and there was a narration of Rasulullah Sallallahu when, whenever uh, he was sitting in a room and uh, Fatima came in. And, and you can imagine, uh, this is a, I think this is probably the best. If you want to, want to have the best sort of father-daughter relationship, you should probably... Uh, read the stories of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Fatima. He actually stood up, right, and kissed uh, Fatima, and then, and then uh, uh, put her to sit where uh, he was sitting. So to that level of respect that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave to Fatima, uh, so, uh, Ali, Rodi oh. yeah, yeah, sorry. Then. Uh, Let's continue our story, some of the stories about Fatima during the Makkah time. The Makkah time, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Fatima was five years old when the first revelation came. And that's why he witnessed a lot of persecutions, not, on, not only upon the Muslims, uh, but there's also um, the, to her, her own father as well. And there is an incidence of the entrail of the camels. At that time, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, common people to go to Kaaba and uh, do praying. Uh, at that time, Rasulullah was there, and all the leaders of Makkah, uh, there was Abu Jahal was there, there was Uqbah bin Rabia, uh, bin Rabia was there, Saibah, Walid bin Utbah, and including Umayyah bin Khalaf. Umayyah bin Khalaf is the owner of uh, Bilal uh, bin Rabah, radiallahu anhu. And they were talking to look at that Muhammad so Salam and then and whoever wants to uh, to do something to him and then you know sometimes you know people went after the slaughter or they have this uh, uh, the gut the entrail the bowels of the camel they put it somewhere uh, in um, in the part of the town and someone who can take that one and then put it into into the into Rasulullah so they this is like really someone can go to that level. Right, really down to that level to show how indespicable. I don't know how to put that. Uh, that's why all these four people, the five people that I mentioned, they all died in the Battle of Badr. So there are there are people in Makkah who are probably against Islam, but they don't show this like a strong uh, uh, animosity. Uh, they end up having uh, uh, having hidayah, right? They are being uh, receiving hidayah. But for example. Uh, Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was also, was also against Rasulullah, but he didn't go to that level what Abu Jahal did and 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 Umayyah bin Khalaf did. He they didn't do it to this level. This the word that coming out of their mouth, they how they they treat Rasulullah is really beyond, uh, is indespicable. Is really beyond him. And this is probably uh, is not fixable. For put it that way. So during during that time, and when Rasulullah was praying, and they put this. Uh, the entrails and the bowels and, and the disgust things uh, the, of, the, of the camel, of the dyed camel, it's a, a dyed she camel. And it was uh, Khadija, imagine Khadija probably around seven, eight, nine years old, as he went there with crying and 
help her fathers and remove all the filth and everything. At this stage, not only caring, but you can think that she's actually brave. She actually talked to her, why are you guys doing this and stuff like that. So you can imagine this is bravery from a very young age and she had to witness all of this. And all of this actually making her stronger and stronger. Uh, and uh, there is a, uh, when, when, uh, when the ayah, Surah um, Suara, I think, wa anzir asirat akal akrobin. And Rasulullah was instructed by Allah, remind, warn your closest family, right? Your closest family. And then, oh yes, I have that. Yes, Al Suara. Uh, and then Rasulullah Sallam came and said, Ya uh, Safiya bin, uh, binti Abdul Muttalib. Protect yourself from the hellfire. And then he mentions all the sons of Abu Talib, Abdul Muttalib, all, all my family members mentioned that. And he mentioned, O Fatima binti, uh, binti Muhammad, right? Protect yourself from the hellfire, right? Ankezi nafsaki minan nar. Protect yourself. For verily, I will not be able to protect you uh, from Allah in this. So that shows us, um, this is a very important lesson for us. That shows us that the being a family doesn't mean you guaranteed, you haven't guaranteed. Right? We, uh, born as a Muslim, born by the name of Abu Bakr, just born by born by Muslim, it doesn't mean it's a, Jannah is guaranteed to you. You have to do your own deed and deen as well. And this is a very good uh, how, how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa reminded even Fatima radiallahu anha that I will not, your father will not be able to protect you from hellfire. You have to do your own deed and your own deen, right? Um, and again, this is part of the teaching of uh, how uh, the early age of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa If you remember Surah Luqman, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا لُقْمَنَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِ اسْكُرْ لِلَّهِ And then, Ya Bunaya, la tusrik billah, right? So, uh, oh my son, do not make associations of uh, partnership or shirk to Allah. So this is a very young age and people uh, advising the children. And this is how Rasulullah started advising. Not only he addressed all the, his kindred, his family members, his close family members, but at the stage, he also reminded Fatima uh, radiallahu uh, anha. And even there was a story, I think, that's probably a story in Medina. I'll explain a bit later on. Um, yes, Rasulullah Sallam uh, went to Safa and won all this help. Uh, uh, the son of Abu Sof, uh, the son of Abdul Muttalib, please protect, rescue yourself from the fires, for I have no power. And that is uh, the great lesson for us that we are all responsible for our deeds, just because our father. The thing is. Um, I don't know if like if you a great imam and stuff like that, and then you have a son. The son suddenly become, and people associate it, right? Uh, it's always people always being associated, if, especially if they have a great uh, father, so a great figure of uh, or celebrity or something like that. Yeah. So it is uh, is a reminder. So even Rasulullah SAW cannot even protect uh, the loved ones, and it is proven when uh, Abu Talib died, uh, uh, and then he didn't. Abu Talib was it, yeah, and he didn't convert to Islam. Rasulullah SAW was very sad, and then and and it was the Quran was revealed at that time that you cannot give hidayah to people uh, you love. So this is some of the stories around Makkah time. Uh, the other stories about um, about her was uh, there was a story. It was uh, recorded in Sahih Bukhari uh, where. There was this lady, uh, I think from a from a noble family. Uh, she had, uh, she was, uh, she stole something, and then uh, she committed a theft, and then she was, uh, and she she knew that that her punishment is uh, that the the hand will be cut off, uh, and then she uh, she she was asking, she she tried to get some sort of help and. Uh, what, what do you call that? Or the intercessions, right? Oh, I don't want to be punished. And, and then she approached Osama bin Zaid. Osama bin Zaid was the, the beloved of Rasulullah SAW. And then and she approached Osama. Osama, is it possible that you talk to uh, Rasulullah SAW that, you know, lo lower the punishment for me? The, the, uh, and then, and then when, and when then, uh, and when Osama approached Rasulullah SAW and Rasulullah 
said, and this is a very famous one, as he said, do you want me to intercede with me with the punishment of Allah? Right? And then, and Rasulullah got up, all oh, people, yeah, you had nas. The people before you, the nation before you, they went into a stray because if a noble person committed a theft, they used to leave him. But if a weak person among them committed theft, they used to inflict them with the legal punishment, right? So it's just, right? So if rich people committed theft or committed crime, oh, let it go, right? But if, uh, if it's weak people or uh, small people, they committed uh, committed crime, we have to uphold the law and everything, right? It's common almost everywhere. No one says it's common. Yes, it's quite common. And then he continued, and which, which is very good. I really love this. And, Rasul, and Rasulullah Sallallahu continued by saying, By Allah, right? By Allah, if Fatima binta Muhammad committed theft, Muhammad will cut off her hand. So uh, uh, this, is, this is what justice is all about. Justice is not, um, justice is blind, they call it, right? So you don't pick your, who you just and. Yeah. Wallahu, law an. Law an La anna Fatima bint Muhammad and then uh, Fatima the Sarakat la qata'a Muhammadun yadaha then Muhammad will cut uh, her hand and again uh, this is a, a very um, profound uh, teaching from uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it, it, it is very hard especially when you're in power and 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 one of your family members even distant family members your cousin or something committed a crime and or probably like a speeding ticket or something, and then call, can you please let me out, right? And it is quite common everywhere. And again, this is the sign of uh, Iman. And and at a very young age, and uh, Fatima learned this from her grandfather, and then it said in front of the public, or oh, yeah, you understand, means in front of the public, uh, with, by Allah, if Fatima stole, I would cut her horn off, right? To that level. So that is the, the part of teachings and I, not so much stories I can pick up from uh, the Makkah time, but one of the tragic time of uh, Fatima Radulla and of course Rasulullah was the uh, the passing away of Khadija Radulla and her, and at that time was and you can imagine Rasulullah uh, with all the persecutions around and how the all the Sahaba being persecuted and everything, and Abu Talib died, passed away, and then Khadija passed away. It was really, really tough for uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and Fatima. So you can imagine how they went through difficulties, how they went through persecutions, and, and the person that they love so much, they have to lose her. And, and it, is, it, is a big, uh, it is a big loss form. And then Fatima Radiallahu Anha was actually tested at a very young age, uh, losing her mother. I think if if Rasulullah, if Khadija passed away 10 years to uh, the prophethood, uh, then probably uh, she was probably about 15 years old, 15 to 16 years old. And you can imagine uh, there's a big loss for Fatima Radiallahu Remember last month I told about that Khadija was the first one who got uh, glad tidings of Jannah. That Jibril came and Jibril says, I talked to, said that your, your house in paradise is already prepared for you. So. No worry, no anything, no no worry, no problem, right? And then that was probably one of the con uh, things that consoling uh, Fatima Radulah the fact that uh, she's at peace right now, and Allah already promised uh, uh, Jannah, a big a big house in Jannah, right? So again, we learn uh, another thing that we learn about uh, this incident of of the I just put one note here that again we learn Allah's uh, hudud or Allah, Allah's punishment or law is a top priority so it's, it's a, um, it is above our feeling and our judgment right? I just put a note in there alright uh, so there's some of the stories about uh, Makkan time and in Medina time I think wow we're running fast today not many people around. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, one of the big uh, incidents or big um, story at Medina was her marriage to Ali. And uh, Fatima, uh, Rasulullah said to Fatima, I have married you to the dearest one of my family. 
So, and, and as you say, there's actually many Sahaba try had indicated that they want the Fatima's hand in marriage. And Rasulullah SAW at the time was not, uh, did not uh, say yes. Even Abu Bakr and, and Umar was asking for marriage as well. But at the end, Rasulullah SAW uh, gave it to Ali. Uh, Ali actually came to propose, but out of shyness and, and respect for Rasulullah SAW, he, he actually could not say it. So what do you want, Ali? You want to marry Fatima, <laughs> right? And then he asked, what do you have? I don't have anything. And then how about the, the shield that you have? Oh, yeah, yeah, shield, but okay, I can sell it. So um, Ali bin Abi Talib actually went up to uh, uh, Uthman bin Affan. And then he says, I have this shield, so can I sell it to you? And I said, what do you want? Oh, I want some money because I'm going to marry the, the daughter of Rasulullah SAW. And then, so Uthman actually bought that shield. So after they bought it, and then says, okay, this shield is actually, I give it to you as a gift. Uh, it's probably more useful, this way, probably more use for you than for me. So that was, and then Rasulullah SAW then came to Fatima and asked whether uh, you would like to marry uh, Ali. And of course, uh, at that time, when the woman did not say anything, that means yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> so of course, uh, right now nowadays is probably not necessarily the case in our uh, the time and culture, right then. Yeah. Right, uh, then um, Ali was uh, married to Fatima until her death. So they were married for about ten years. Uh, just after the marriage of after Fatima passed away, then Ali married uh, other ladies as well. But there was. Uh, uh, and then they, I think this is one probably one of the happiest marriage, uh, or the the family, uh, the uh, the family of Rasulullah uh, Sallam. Some stories during Makkah time, uh, Medina time, it was the the battle of Uhud, as we know that the Muslims suffered a huge blow. Even Rasulullah Sallam uh, was so injured and so bad that after a few a uh, few days after that. Uh, that battle, Rasulullah Sallam led the prayer while sitting because he obviously he couldn't he couldn't walk or stand up. And at the time, it was Ali and, and Fatima radiallahu anha uh, actually helped Rasulullah Sallam and washed the wound of Rasulullah. And and there was a narration that when she used water to wipe the wound, and the blood still coming out, and for that. Uh, she used the the piece of like a piece of uh, straw and then burn one side, and then cover it. Uh, then will stop the, the the blood flow, and it is probably becoming one of the uh, the tibun nabawi. How do you say tibun nabawi? The medications of the prophet, right? Tibun nabawi, like for example the the hijama and stuff. That is called part of the, and drinking honey uh, regularly every morning with with water and uh, stuff like that. It's called, is one book. Uh, uh, this is called uh, Tibun Nabawi, that means the, the medication of the Prophet. So what Prophet suggests, for example, honey, right? Uh, there was, I don't know whether you remember the story of someone came and complained that I have a stomach ache. And Rasulullah says, why don't you drink honey? And then he come back the following day, I still have my problem. And then why don't you drink honey? And then until three times. And then after that, he uh, recovered. And Rasulullah Wasallam said, Allah told the truth, your your stomach lied to you. So that's probably because probably he didn't lie or he didn't probably he didn't trust, he didn't really believe that it will cure him or it was probably not the word, uh, the right dose and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, honey is uh, the word sifa was mentioned four times in Quran and three times as a Quran is a sifa and one time as in Surah Nahal, ayah number sixty nine, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where uh, Allah mentions that is honey being sifa. So, yeah, I think we are in the viral outbreak of COVID-19 right now. So I think there's probably a good opportunity for me to remind everyone to uh, to go back to the Tibun Nabawi, the medication of Rasulullah Sallam by drinking honey regularly. Uh, and again, make it as a habit uh, rather than as a medication. So make it a uh, rather than a, a treatment, make it as a more sort of a prevention rather than the cure, right? So, so that was the the story of that, um, and another st story about uh, Tasbih of Fatima. I don't know whether you heard this before. Um, 
the drink i think that's after the battle of bani mustalik i think fifth year or six years after uh, after the hijrah um fatima radhiyallahu did all the house chores and do the uh, the bread and and all the cleaning and everything and then, and then she was she was so tired and then she had to carry water as well so she got swollen shoulders and and blisters and and everything and uh, and one day she was uh, well, this is very tough for me and then she asked to uh, her husband ali um i i need some help here and then ali went says oh we had i think i i I'm not mistaken it's after the battle of bani mustalik when they have so many uh war booty as well of slaves I mean, you know when uh, during that time and when people fight from one tribe to another or when the two tribes fight uh, and then the the losing tribe so normally the woman and the, they become slave so it is uh, during, during that time so there were so many slaves and so on and ali suggested why don't you ask your father uh to give me one so they came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then responded by then they uh to uh, and then one i think during the night time rasulullah came to them and then there was uh, probably still in the relaxed situations and everything and uh, while well, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came uh heard you needed someone to help you uh you need a slave girl or anyone to help you um let me tell you something um what don't i tell you uh what is the best um the the best um gift the more than the more than what you want or what is it ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said what did you say every night before you go to bed say subhanallah 33 times alhamdulillah 33 times and allahu akbar 34 times all 100 and that should be sufficient for you and ali radhiyallahu anhu mentions after the advice of rasulullah he never missed this uh, tasbih before uh, before he went to bed and again what is the lesson here uh in the time of difficulties right and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam um taught and advised his own daughter to make more zikr to make more remembrance of allah and you can imagine and this is not a when someone asks for a slave or someone asks for a servant uh, someone needs a physical help right but what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam give advice is not physical is spiritual right so and again this is depends on our faith and, and if you think that um our uh, this is why the level of the faith of fatima is already high the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam no you don't need you don't need someone to help you you just need to say more zikr right and again this is the is it is completely different realm in terms of advice right maybe someone come to you at money give money and someone coming to want money no no you need more zikr <laughs> right so again this is uh, subhanallah this is a lot of thing that we can learn a very simple thing uh, that rasulullah actually came before they go to bed right so actually made an effort to come to uh, they were probably on their bed already and no no don't stand up I said, uh, let me tell you something you want i know you want slave uh, slave girl to help you but let me give you something more than that which is a zikr so it was referred as the tasbih of fatima and and hopefully uh for us uh, something that we can it's very easy right it's not probably doesn't take five minutes to say subhanallah subhanallah just like when you see askar uh, after prayer right yeah. all right uh a few stories about uh, madina time uh when we talk about ali radhiyallahu anha i mentioned this story and again why this story is recorded subhanallah uh where is where is, a, is this amazing story i i really think this is amazing story that that every healthy family should have conflicts right? that's a problem when we watch too much uh, movies <laughs> hollywood movies like every like uh, you know you know in the uh the the story book that children have they and they get married they get married uh, happily ever after right so uh, people at the very young age was deceived that when you get married with the prince and everything and and what not you, know, you always be going to be happy married now you have to go to difficult this is part of our deen this is part of our uh, our life that you tested with difficulties and challenges and so on and 
apparently people who promised Jannah, right? Ali bin Abi Talib who promised Jannah, uh, uh, Asara Mubasara, 10 people promised Jannah. Ali and Fatima Radwana will be the queen, will be the leader of women in Jannah. They're two human beings, right? Uh, already promised Jannah. You don't think you don't think they have they don't have fight in the, in the family? Yes, they did, they did, and it is actually a lesson for us. So it is actually something that we take lessons from. If we have someone, and they don't have every family, they don't everything is uh, nice and 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 tidy, and then we cannot learn from them, right? So there should be. So it is. It was recorded. That means there's something that we can take a lesson from. So what happened was Ali bin Abi Talib had some quarrels, some of as a normal family, normal healthy family do, which is to have some heated debate and discussion. And Ali bin Abi Talib, radiallahu anh, instead of going to the whatever you want a cafe, well, people are having problems, that they go to coffee shop, they go to the mountain, all right? They go to uh, Ali bin Abi Talib, he went to the masjid and then stay outside the masjid and lying down and until he was uh, he was covered with dust. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and then called him, Ya Abu Turab, get up, get up, kum ya Abu, Abu Turab. And uh, Abu Talib was very, uh, he was very happy to be nicknamed by Abu Turab. Abu Turab means the father of dust. And again, even though this is a story of uh, Abu uh, Ali bin Abi Talib, but again, we can take a lesson from here, uh, how even the family of people of Jannah, right, uh, the celebrity of Jannah, uh, there, how many, there, there are two, few types of celebrity, right, uh, the celebrity of politics, celebrity of entertainment, but we have here celebrity of Jannah, and we should know this, their story, right. All right, uh, another, another story uh, about uh, Mubahala, uh, do you know do you know Mubahala? This is probably not common. Uh, Mubahala is the story happens like this. Uh, there was a Christian priest at uh, Nazian Narian. Can not remember what is, what is my mind not on that? There's a couple of uh, priests who came uh, from Najran. Yeah, from Najran. Yeah, from Najran. They came and they heard. Oh, okay, there was a prophet there. Let's go there. So they bring the family. It's about. Um, how many people of them? I think I, I put a knot. Where's my knot on that? There's about 60 people come from Najran. And some of them is a noble family. Some of them the priests. And they they want to know, you really prophet? And, and, and Rasulullah actually hosted them. And you know where they sleep? Because at that time, there's no hotel, right? And then you, they actually slept at the, uh, at the, uh, at the mosque of the prophet which is the uh, Nabawi, the Masjid Nabawi. They actually, all this, the priests and everyone, all the groups actually stayed there, right? So, because this is where, and only this time that, if you, if you, if you think about it, right, the, what is mosque? Actually? Mosque is actually not only for people to pray. Mosque is when you have problems, you go to mosque. And you have issues, you go to mosque. And you have want to have problems. You want a happy and everything. You go to mosque. Your mosque is like a is like a community center. All right. So uh, the mosque will be open twenty four hours because a lot of people have issues and problem where they go. Right. They go to the mosque. Right. And hopefully one day the function of the mosque will become like fully at the time of Rasulullah uh, Sallallahu uh, I don't know whether you remember the story of where people from Abyssinia came to Medina and they do this. Uh, the show of uh, almost like an acrobatic with the playing with swords and everything and they do it in the masjid right? and I saw that at the time was uh, I want to watch that and she watched it behind of Rasulullah but that is different story well, what I'm, the point I'm trying to get is the mosque is actually being used as a community center at this time which is quite precedence right and where the, all the priests actually stay is inside the masjid of Rasulullah so these priests, obviously, they pray as well. Where do you think they pray? <laughs> Inside the masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. So, yes, um, this uh, delegation from Najran, uh, some of them prays, and uh, Rasulullah invited them to Islam. Uh, Rasulullah mentions about uh, the Surah Ali Imran. In, uh, inna, inna mathalal, 
Inna masalah Isa indallahi kamathali Adam. Right? Verily, the um, the example of Jesus to Allah or Isa alaihi salam to Allah is like Adam. So Rasulullah is doing da'wah by quoting Quran that uh, Jesus is not uh, is not divine. He's just like Adam, right? And khalaqahu min turab thumma kola la thumma kola lahu kun fayakun. And for Allah, it's just easy to make it kun fayakun. So, and then um, and Rasulullah after that recited that Rasulullah invite them to Islam, and. You know what mubahala uh, is uh, something like this. I bring myself and my family, and I cur- and I make dua to Allah, and I says, curse me, curse someone who lie. So, for example, I'm telling the truth. Islam is the truth, right? And if you think your religion is the truth as well, let's do this mubahala, right? What it means is I bring my family. And you bring your family, right? And we together we make du'a and invite the curse of Allah, whoever lying between the two, right? And then uh, because they're so confident with the religion, they says, okay, we want to do that. And then okay, let's do it tomorrow, something like that. And then before that tomorrow comes, they had this meeting among themselves and say, what happened if he's a prophet? No, no, let's not do that. And they actually agree. Not to do it, right? So this, yeah, each party supplicate and implores or implore our Allah's curse. And some of them says, "Wow, oh, this cannot be wrong. Uh, this cannot be. How about if it is a prophet?" So it looks like they know this is a prophet, and at the end they actually uh, back down. They don't want to do that. But what is the story behind it? Is when Rasulullah mentions uh, that bring the family. Uh, he had with him Hasan, Hussein, and Fatima. So this is probably the cause. The close family to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All right, Medina time. Uh, that's probably the last part uh, about uh, where she had to experience uh, the greatest loss of this ummah, which is the 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 passing away of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was at the house of uh, uh, of Aisha, and she called for Aisha to be. Um, she asked for Aisha. Aisha uh, she, she asked for Fatima to be called, and Fatima came, and Fatima was crying to see her father suffering, and and then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked her, "Let me tell you something," and then he whispered to her, and then after that she was crying, when she was crying, Rasulullah Sallam, let me whisper, and then sign again. At the time Rasulullah was very weak, he couldn't even say, um, and then. After that, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whisper again, and then she was she was smiling. And at that time, uh, after the after the uh, the funeral of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha asked, "What what happened? The first the first whisper you were crying, and then the second whisper you you're smiling. What happened? You actually laugh." And the first whisper, Rasulullah says, "I will not recover from this illness." So that means she knew that she's gonna pass away uh, soon. And then Rasulullah asked, I told her again, you will be the my family member will join me. And she was laughing. She laughed at death. SubhanAllah. Right. So and I like I like I like I, I, I read this somewhere and I really like this phrase when the more the less you fear Allah, the more you fear death. Right. I think this probably applied to Fatima Radulah. How, how when in the midst of crying, and Rasulullah say, "You you will die very soon," something like that, right? And then she was laughing. She laughed at that, and and this, uh, and then and it was just uh, some narration say four months and six months, uh, and and Fatima Radulah now passed away, and of course. The other strands of Islam also have a different narrations as well. That, but of course, we're not gonna uh, discuss about that. But uh, uh, for our belief, that was uh, Fatima Radhiallah actually passed away out of uh, sorrow uh, from the death of uh, her beloved father. Uh, she um, 
she wept and wept and uh, she didn't actually want to eat, uh, eat or drink and then she was just weeping um, and out of loss this is a big loss for her and she passed away just a uh, four month or six months after the passing away of Rasulullah and before she died she 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 asked to be buried at night and why because she didn't want everyone to see her figure right so so that's why she was asked to be buried at night so this is uh, the short story is about fatima radiallahu and some of the things about uh, the blessings of her as i mentioned before uh, fatima radiallahu was known for her loving and devoted daughter and then as a mother as well to uh, uh, Hassan and Hussein, which is the the leaders of the young of the youth in Jannah, right? And of course, she's also a loving and devoted wife as well, as a role model for Muslim women. And one of the thing is uh, which I like, which I always strive to be, is to be close to my daughter because Rasulullah Sallam is very close to uh, to his daughter. It's very close, and and you know the hadith from Rasulullah Sallam. If we have three daughters, and you raise them to be good, uh, good people or good uh, ladies, and there will be jannah for you. And then Rasulullah, and then one Sahaba says, "How about only two daughters, ya Rasulullah? Yes, go jannah as well. How about one, ya Rasulullah, go to jannah? So it is, it is a big blessing. Uh, at the time where people of Quraysh really worship the idea of having sons, right? Really, uh, everything is around, surrounded around having sons and. And Rasulullah was given a daughter, uh, Fatima radiallahu anha, and uh, she was uh, she became the role model of uh, all the Muslim women, and one of the things is because she's very close to her father. Uh, she was probably the most historical figure after Khadija radiallahu anha, and again, uh, what can she be? She's uh, the daughter of Khadija radiallahu anha. So she is known for uh, mor moral purity, and it was sort of uh, people have that as a same position as Maryam. Uh, when you say Maryam, you say Alayhi Salam or Anha. <laughs> Maryam, the mother of Jesus, the mother of Isa, Alayhi Salam. So that's what uh, people make the analogy of her because uh, the pure, uh, the purity, and then, and and again. Like I said before, is the Um Abiha, the mother of her father, is enough for me to see the the blessing, the fadila, the 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 great of a woman uh, as she was. I think that's pretty much what we can share for uh, the uh, for Fatima Rodiha tonight, and as one of the greatest women that ever uh, uh, perfected the faith, and will be the uh, Sayyidatul. Uh, Nisa, said to Nisa in Jannah, right? Jannah. All right, that's all what we can share, inshallah. Uh, if there's any question so far, there's so many people here. <laughs> is there any people online actually? No, is it online now, right? Yeah, oh, it is online, okay. <laughs> actually, brother, I want to know about the concept of that uh, slaves actually. Oh, so, like, uh, how will they, how are or to say you as you said like uh, Ali asked Fatima to ask mm. her father to yeah. um, allocate a slave for yeah. helping her so how will they treat them and I just want to know because the word slaves represents yeah like, yes so yes I just want to yeah. know how will uh, yeah. uh, they be treating them yeah the the brother asked about how how's how's a slave and uh, being treated and uh, how they come about slave yeah. at the time of Rasulullah uh, Sallallahu We have to know this, that Islam does not come and abolish uh, slavery, but Islam encourages people uh, to get rid of slavery, but not abolish it completely. Um, what Islam came is to, uh, to make rules and to make sharia and how you deal with your uh, slave, right? Uh, how slave came about actually um, at the time there's no country there's no government right there's people have a tribes as you see uh, for example in the battle of Badr or the battle of uh, Taqif or the battle of Taif right for example people when they go to battle they bring their animals their family everything into the into the battle zone right if they die 
if they lost the battle so their wealth and their wife and their families and everything they uh, they or even their slave and everything will become the owner of the uh, winning part right so that's why they become like a sort of a property if you will right so then they own it they take if they have the camels and everything even the uh, the battle of hunan for example there's so many camels and 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 goats and stuff like that and rasulullah gave away all of this to people so when they have this um, they call it slave i think the uh, the word slavery because we always associate the slavery because right now is a modern slavery was uh, whatever the year is in the united states people always have that uh, mentality that slave where people put in a cabin and and they torture them to death and so on but during the time the slavery is quite common right if you have that even uh, the son of uh, the stepson of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, zaid bin haritha was was a slave as arab slave is not a is a not a black slave is an arab slave he was actually stolen from his tribe and then sold to the slave market so what i was going to say is when you have a tribal war and stuff like that there's no government and then this become own right so when they own so they have so uh, what islam did was to introduce how you should treat your slave for example uh treat your for example your slave uh, eat what you eat they wear what you wear something like that that's number one. number two, slavery in islam is uh if you if they cannot do that you have to do it so that means you don't give them tasks that beyond their capacity right uh so first of all they eat what you eat right so if i can extend it right now if you have android phone then your slaves should have the same android model as well or something like that right <laughs> just uh, just to be honest right so it's not like you treat it completely different right because it is part of the family uh at the time if someone if you if your slave of course is is something that is is like a property you can sell then and so on but again if if your slave did something wrong and people will blame the owner so this is the uh uh um, something that is part of the family put it that way uh so number one, uh they eat what you eat they wear what you they they wear what you wear right number two, you don't give tasks that is uh, that they cannot afford uh, they cannot do number three, which is uh, quite important as well if the slave this one in islam if the slave says what is my price you mentioned the price let's say 10000 hong kong or something okay give me two years three years i'll work somewhere to get the money and I'll pay this 10000. If your slave asks you to do this to what do you call this in English manumented what is what is I, I can't remember the word in English. If you if the slaves want to be free then you have to let go. So you have to agree to that. So completely different with the slave slavery that you heard from the uh, the black american history is completely different, right? right? So I think that is uh, that is the uh, the rules here. and rosasa sam has few slaves as well and for example the slave of uh, abdullah was given to amina by the name of um ayman and then when uh, when rosasa sam was 6 years old amina passed away then um ayman became the slave of rosasa sam but rosasa sam not even she called um ayman is the woman of jannah and she married her with uh Zaid bin Haritha and Rasulullah sallam even call her amma mother right so up to that level you can see the how 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 he actually treat uh uh um uh Umayman subhanallah this is beyond so the word slave suddenly doesn't fit that description yes. right? <laughs> right because we have we used to hearing uh, hollywood and yeah. stuff like that what is slavery and everything mm-hmm. and then if we put this word slave and then we put it in our context suddenly oh this this word is no longer uh, fit that so i think that is probably uh, does it answer your questions bro yes, yes. alhamdulillah all right so if no other uh, questions uh, we we close this and then we meet again inshallah next month uh subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik Jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh